Welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mauni. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 1st October 2017 and the day is Sunday. Dear friends, yesterday we celebrated the festival of the Shera and what I believe or what I think the biggest difference between or what one what is a major difference between say for example Ram and Ramana then I think it is the it is a, a sort of difference of uh, the power of discrimination and the power of knowledge now we know that we are preparing for civil services examination and because of that we come to know about many different things that are taking place in the country and around the world as well and uh, we know about Ravana that he was a sort of a very knowledgeable person he was considered one of the most knowledgeable person at that point of time in in terms of Ram as well he was more knowledgeable but one thing that he was lacking was the power of discrimination which Ram was having. Ram was uh, filled up with this power of discrimination. He was able to discriminate between what is good and bad and Ravana having all this knowledge he was not able to do that and that is the reason that all the decisions right major decisions that uh, changed his life forever uh, are because of uh, he was having just knowledge and not uh, a power of discrimination to to basically decide what is right and what is wrong for his life and that is one of the reason why we see himself uh, that uh, getting destroyed by the end of this uh, this Ramayana so what why I'm pointing out these things to you because as I told you that uh, when we prepare for competitive exam we come across many things and uh, Many times it is believed that with the, with the knowledge, uh, people uh, also become a little bit of egoistic as well. So we have to ensure ourselves that we are not polluted by ego and we have to keep a fine balance between uh, knowledge and discrimination. And I'm sure that uh, everyone will give their best to do. Uh, keep this fine balance now let's see what we have got what are the important things uh, we have got and before moving ahead please allow me to introduce to our pen drive and tablet courses now you know that uh, study iq provides you top quality material and this material is not just like any other material that you can get in the market the good thing about this material is that with this pen drive courses you do get the experience of the top faculties of our country what I'm trying to say is that this, this this courses are designed by some of the best faculties of our country. So if you haven't got it, I would recommend all of you to get it as soon as possible. If you have any further question queries, you can feel free to give us a call on this number. Or you can check out our studyiq.com website as well. And for the students preparing for UPSC, we would like to inform you that there is a UPSC test series out there on our website. Do get it now. Right. So coming to Afghanistan. India and United States of America we have talked about this thing in at, uh, during our discussion on articles and uh, basically a chief executive of uh, Afghanistan his name is Abdullah Abdullah he was here in India so he said that he can clearly see there is a sort of triangle taking place uh, when it, when I talk about triangle I'm talking about Afghanistan uh, you have USA here and you have India so all these three countries are cooperating with each other and they are working sincerely to to develop uh, Afghanistan they are trying to uh, to spread democracy over here they're trying to get to make Afghanistan uh, terrorism free and things like that and there was one more important topic that was in discussion and uh, USA was expecting or it was uh, trying to uh, it was trying to persuade India to to deploy some uh, some soldiers in Afghanistan and India has clearly stated that that is not something India is going to do at present. Uh, the other development things that India is doing, it can be uh, intensified, but India is not going to deploy any sort of boots in the ground. Now, regarding this thing, uh, Mr. Abdullah has also said that uh, his country in particular has not uh, made any sort of demand uh, like this. And uh, he said that his country respects India's position. So if India is happy, if India is uh, not happy about deploying for soldiers and if India is happy about just providing other sort of development work, then we are more than happy with India. That's what he has said. Now, let me tell you one thing that it is not that India is uh, afraid of anyone or anything that uh, that is the reason why we are not deploying soldiers in this part of the world it is only because uh, it is not part of our strategy at at present and uh, let me tell you that uh, when it comes to united nation peacekeeping force as well at in in this uh, united nation peacekeeping force it is the indian troops it is the indian uh, defense personnel who are in the biggest number we we are contributing quite a lot in united nation and they are working in different countries as well so this itself proves that 
it is just a matter of strategy that's the reason why we are not deploying any troops in afghanistan at present and uh, when we are contributing this, mu this much amount of uh, in, in in peacekeeping forces when we are contributing in peacekeeping around the world uh, it is a strong point in our favor to claim for United Nations Security Council's permanent membership. This is, there are many other points like population is there, the, the economy and uh, uh, this peacekeeping. So this is one of uh, those points that are in our favor. Apart from that, USA and Indian soldiers both are going to, recently we had uh, Youth Abhyas 2017 and uh, they are going to start a pilot project. It, in fact, it has already started and uh, with this, uh, both the militaries of India and USA will work together uh, to, to to maintain this uh, peacekeeping troops in 16 African countries and it is going to be under United Nations project. Now the other item uh, is that uh, if you observe in last uh, uh, 10 days we have seen that nearly three countries interacted with India. The one is uh, we know that USA's uh, defense minister was here uh, apart from that, uh, we have this Abdullah. Abdullah, he was from Afghanistan, right? And the third person was from Russia. He was a, a, a special envoy of uh, Vladimir Putin. He was uh, specifically sent here to 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 sort of uh, give up a, a sort of reassurance or to ensure that everything is fine between India and Russia because we know that at present uh, Russia is... Uh, uh, having a sort of cordial it is developing good relation with pakistan and of course india is uh, you know, the relation between us and india are improving quite a lot and in his south asia policy which is recently released uh, by donald trump he has clearly stay, uh, said he has he has basically criticized the role of pakistan and he has appreciated the role of india so we know about these things and uh, the main thing over here is that this all great games, right? Great game. When I'm when I'm saying great games, I'm indicating the politics that is going on between the major powers here. You have USA, Russia, China, and uh, Europe, and some countries of Europe as well. The, this people are not uh, getting along with each other, and because of that, things are. The, the, it is this country of Afghanistan that is suffering quite a lot. Uh, if we check this uh, global. Uh, world map then as well we find that you know that afghanistan is here, uh, here pakistan and iraq iran both are sharing a land boundary with each other if we go back in the history during the cold wars uh, uh, when we had like two teams around the world it was bipolar uh, one one team was consisting of uh, usa the leader was usa and the other side you had ussr now ussr was expansionist it was uh, it was uh, taking over uh, it was expanding its area, so it invaded Afghanistan. And at that point of time, it was um, USA along with Pakistan. They decided that how about if we implant this sort of Mujahideen soldiers, we'll provide them weapon, etc., etc. This was the whole strategy. After a severe fight with this uh, uh, USSR people, when the finally USSR was out of this Afghanistan, uh, this people who have provided this Mujahideen fighters, uh, they decided that if we have weapons and if we are able to do all these things, then why we should listen to USA or Pakistan or anyone else? We will do whatever we like. And then came Osama bin Laden and other terrorist organization, etc., etc. And uh, today we know that uh, uh, Pakistan as well uh, has been provided with money and all sort of support because it is uh, sharing a border with Afghanistan. So uh, Pakistan utilized this money and uh, weapons that were coming from USA to disturb peace in India. But now things are changing and hopefully we will change it. And we know that when it comes to relations between Iran and uh, Afghan Iran and USA, then they are ha not having any cordial relation. In fact, China and Russia together are having sort of good relation with Iran. Pakistan is a sort of all weather friend or Ch China is considered by Pakistan as a sort of all weather friend the relationship between russia and pakistan are improving as well so this is a small uh, sort of uh, overview of global politics another important item and this is uh, this i believe uh, will help you a lot this is pertaining to the post of governor now four states uh, basically got new governors and uh, this are uh, tamil Nadu. then you have bihar after kovinji bihar seat was empty Arunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya. Now, with the help of this Tamil Nadu, I would like to add something to you that uh, till now, the uh, the governor of Maharashtra used 
to hold uh, charges of two states one is maharashtra and the second one is tamil Nadu. and this can be done this is allowed as per seventh constitutional amendment act of 1956 that means one governor can uh, can handle charge of one or more states right this can be done now coming to the basic things regarding governance some of the important things rather than calling it basic now governors are appointed by the president of our country when I say appointed, I'm also saying that there is no sort of direct or indirect election. It is a person who is selected uh, by the president. And we know that the uh, president basically works on the, uh, on the advice of prime minister. So it is basically you can say that the ruling party in the center will finally select or will decide who is going to be the governor. The final signature and the stamp will be um, laid by this president. Uh, the reason why we don't have this sort of uh, any sort of election when it comes to governor is because we already have election when it comes to chief minister so there is no point of wasting money after it no not only money but no point of uh, investing energy in this thing or they would have clashes uh, right so it, to keep everything in balance we have followed this canadian model rather than following us model because in usa you have the governors of their states are elected but here we know the situation what it is now now regarding the name uh, who is uh, um, governor of which state etc that is not that much important but what i find important for you guys is lieutenant governor what is lieutenant governor all about now we have seven union territories and out of this seven union territories we have three uts where you have lieutenant governor one is delhi you might have heard about it the long issue between uh, arvind kejriwal and Najib Jung. It was uh, in news for the longest period of time. The second is uh, second Union territory where you find uh, lieutenant, govern uh, lieutenant governor is Puducherry. Right here you have uh, basically here is uh, basically Puducherry. You find it in both places. Right, the main center is here. Administrative administration center is here, and then you have uh, Mahe and Yanam and. Uh, Karaikal over here. So Puducherry, you have Kiran Bedi. She is quite famous, right? She was an IPS officer, so she is lieutenant governor of Puducherry. And the third place where we have uh, LG or lieutenant governor is Andamar and Nicobar. So keep this th thing in mind. Out of seven union territories, three union territories have lieutenant governor. Rest of them have administrators, right? They are not called governor. They are just called, they are neither called uh, lieutenant governor, they are just called administrator. So keep this thing in mind. This should be crystal clear. Right. Articles, uh, if you go through Article 153 to 167, Part 6 of Constitution, then we find that governor is part of state executive. Now, uh, state executive, as a state executive, you should also keep this in mind that he is the head of the state. Right. Many times you find these sort of questions, these sort of tricky questions in your prelims examination so keep this in mind that he is head of the state but he is not head of the government the head of the government is chief minister so keep this thing in mind as well term his term is five years his basic duties includes being a sort of eye and ear of central government and uh, of course it is quite natural to understand that uh, he should not be a member of parliament or he should not be the member of the state legislature so this is quite clear very easy to understand now four important things he has four different powers one is executive when i say executive i'm talking about the appointments of cms and um, uh, ministers and advocate generals election commission election commissioner uh, constitutional emergency this sort of things fall within the executive powers of governor when we talk about legislative power then um, ordinance right issuing ordinances passing bills or dealing with the bills like saying yes to the bill saying no to the bill uh, returning the bill back to the legislative assembly for for rechecking and one more thing i would like to add over here is that apart from money bill because what happens with this money bill and this is part of your financial powers so let's talk about financial power first so in financial power one of the most important thing is money bill so if you want to place a money bill in your state assembly then it has to get a green signal or you have to um, consult the governor and governor say okay you can place it in the in this house and that's how it works right so when it comes to legislative power he can return all the bills but money bill cannot be written back it's quite simple because it's easy to understand because that has already got his green signal in the first place and the last one is judicial power when we talk about judicial power right one more thing i forgot sorry about that 
over here you know that he can say green signal that is that means yes to the bill no to the bill third is he can return the bill back and that is uh, apart from money bill and uh, once once he returns the bill and if the bill is sent back to him then he has to sign right keep this in mind he cannot uh, resend it back again uh, once it comes back then he has to sign and the fourth thing is that he can uh, he can keep some bills uh, for the consideration of president that means if he thinks that uh, these bills are, uh, are, are are of national importance then he can uh, he can send that bill to president's office now here remember if the matter is pertaining to high court then and then only he cannot send it apart from if it is not impacting high court or if it is not pertaining to high court then he can send it to the president when he sends this thing to the president this particular bill at from that point of time uh, he steps out so the governor is not there anymore between this president and the state uh, when it comes to that particular bill it is the president's office or the president who is going to directly deal with uh, the state uh, legis legislature or the state government uh, so this is a sort of important thing i think you should know about it and uh, judicial when we talk about judicial powers then remember that he cannot pardon any sort of death it is only the president who can pardon death penalties so these are the four different areas and i'm sure now it is crystal clear to you now this uh, is something that uh, this is something very horrid news that is coming from mumbai and i'm sure uh, that this is not the first time you might be witnessing this thing and i'm also sure that this is not the last time we are going to witness this because we are not ready to change this particular topic is important for your mains examination for your essay writing and uh, it will help you in your interviews as well now the thing is we know that uh, 23 people got killed in a stampede that took place in a uh, mumbai station now the thing is why these things are happening the first thing is that it is we are not implementing or following standard operating procedures there are rules and regulations and everything is there but we are not following it the people who are in charge of doing all these duties they are not implementing it at all second thing we talk about smart cities but until and unless we don't have smart people then we are not going to get this smart city you can give internet and everything right all the facilities if you give them but if it, if they don't know how to use it then something similar is happening here isn't it a small panic and 23 people pass away this is really really horrendous the other thing is that uh, it reflects our culture as well i'm sure many of you might have seen this thing that uh, pregnant ladies small kids uh, even elderly people they are not provided seat in 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 trains or even in in buses right uh, there are some fit people particularly men lot uh, they sh should stand up and give up their st a seat to the people who are who are in need but this we do not find this thing in fact what we find is everyone is rushing and elbowing each other to get into the bus or train so this is part of our culture when we talk about the young people then imagine the thing that took place here if you observe then you will find that there are all stairs right in fact it is clearly stated in the books that you should make arrangements for the easy and like a sort of accessible all your infrastructure government infrastructure should be accessible for the young people for specially abled people but we don't find it anywhere this is another example and there is also a stereotype going on i'm sure you might have heard about this thing many a time that uh, it is the village people who are who are foolish and they don't know this thing and that thing they don't know how to behave etc and the city people are more sophisticated and they have all the manners and ethics and etiquettes and all these things this is all stereotyping this is all rubbish right because this is taking place is one of the biggest city one of the most famous city in the world mumbai so here we go this is another slap on us so urbanization when you talk about uh, migration or uh, migration of people from rural area from rural area to urban area this topic is impacting it lack of uh, following standard operating procedure or the rules and regulations that are already there these are the things because of which we are facing this sort of problem moving on to another item and this is pertaining to a rape of a woman now this is again a very sad news and why i'm sharing this sort of sad news with you is because we are the ones who are going to make some change in the future because you are going to handle the civil services the steel frame of our country see what happens is this sort of rape cases are 
detrimental for tourism sector recently we launched we india has launched incredible india 2.0 and we know the we know the fact that 10 percent of uh, gdp of our economy is coming from tourism 10 percent population approximately is working in this sector if you invest 10 lakh rupees in tourism sector in tourism then 90 jobs are created if you if you invest same amount of money in uh, say for example manufacturing then only 14 jobs are created and when, you, when we invest same amount of money in agriculture then only 45 jobs are created so this sort of things are definitely not going to attract tourists to visit india second thing is that recently we have discussed a, a, a particular editorial a couple of days ago we have discussed this thing regarding confusing consent i'll give you a small example of this thing what happens is uh, how we are seeing this uh, whole thing we believe that or we are uh, we are thinking that when two people are in relation say for example a boyfriend and girlfriend if they are in relationship with each other then uh, there cannot be any rape right between them that's what we believe we also take it for granted that there's there cannot be anything like uh, marital rape there uh, how can a husband rape a uh, uh, rape his wife that's what we think i'll give you a small example i'm sure all of you might have gone through this thing when we were kids when we were going to school and we used to have a box in which we used to keep our pencil rubber eraser and all those uh, things and i'm sure many of you might have uh, experienced this and most of you might have experienced this thing that one of your classmate of your or your friend or the person who is sitting next to you if they have borrowed any sort of pencil or rubber without asking you without taking your consent then um, you might have felt so at some point of time i'm sure you might have felt like this is not right you should have asked me or something like that same thing applies here as well even if their boyfriend girlfriend even if their husband and wife if a man is forcing a woman right then that is a rape uh, simple is that this is a, a an ongoing issue we uh, so far the court has taken this sort of stand and uh, the court is saying that uh, it is not uh, it cannot find any wrong thing in this case of uh, american researchers rape uh, but i'm sure in future there would be some solution for this thing because this is not going to be beneficial for any one of us now there is a river interconnect uh, or linking three rivers uh, through a canal this project is going on in rajasthan and these are the three rivers here one is uh, Kalisin, second one is Gambiri, and third one is uh, Parvati, and uh, it is basically about dealing with the drinking water problem. Now you know that uh, our planet is seventy percent is covered with water, and then as well we are facing this sort of issues is because that if you observe uh, the figures or the distribution of water in different categories, then we find that rivers constitute zero point triple zero one percent of the total water on the earth, and we know the situation that most of the rivers are polluted at present. When we talk about india so of course we need this sort of rallies this rallies is this rallies are basically uh, are, are creating awareness uh, in the people uh, we should protect it and uh, a famous uh, spiritual guru uh, Sadhguruji, he was uh, he in fact he, he himself is driving and uh, starting from kanyakumari he is going to go to uh, himalayas and then he will on 2nd of october uh, that is tomorrow he will reach uh, delhi so this is the thing this is uh, um, promoted by union environment minister as well reducing food waste to is a top priority of india at present and uh, for that our minister uh, miss badal is in usa she is uh, having a chat with uh, american leaders business leaders industry leaders in this sector and they have all the technologies and they have been using this processing food processing thing for the longest period of time because at present india is currently only processing 10 percent right just 10 percent of the our total food production is processed so that is a very low amount and we know the perishable items like fruits and vegetables milk and other things like and we are producing it in huge quantity as well as you can see here that we rank one when it comes to food production we rank number uh, one when it comes to milk production and we rank number two in fruits and vegetables now i'll give you a small example if you are not processing food right fruits and vegetables say for example apples from kashmir now, if you want to send these apples to say for example karnataka and if you are not processing that what you have to do is you have to take a route of air right this is the only way you can sell via air 
and it is going to be expensive so naturally you will the demand will fall down the perishable items they are valid for only one day's something like meal if you don't process it then in summertime it will it, it will get uh, out of date in like couple of hours so processing is very important and india the biggest loss that we make when we come when we talk about food waste is from farm level to retail level in this uh, between these two things right from from uh, farm level to this retail level uh, or you can say from farm to market between this uh, things between these two items uh, maximum amount of food is wasted right it gets destroyed or get rotten so this is the thing we have to sort it out and for that we have a sampada scheme scheme for agro marine processing and development of agro processing cluster uh, the cluster this is going to uh, basically provide more jobs at farm level and uh, it is going to process all this uh, all the items at ground level and uh, with this uh, there will be mega food parks and cold chain projects as i told you it will create jobs it will boost economy less less wastage means uh, more food more food means less prices so everyone will have a sort of food security it department has a cherished tax collection it has arun jetty has said that it department is doing great job and uh, if we compare the figures then in 2013 in 2012 and uh, this year 2012 13 uh, the tax collection was 4.72 percent but now it has gone up to 6.26 crore uh, I beg your pardon i said i just said uh, person no 4.72 crore people paid their tax uh, in 2012-13 now 6.26 crore people have paid their tax so that indicates that nearly two crore uh, people we can say two crore more taxpayers have been added apart from that tax has also uh, with the widening of this tax base uh, that means more people are paying this tax so the prices of t or the, the tax rate will come down as well and this has happened earlier people earning from 2.5 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees uh, were charged 10 percent but now they are charged with 5 percent which is lowest in the world this uh, sort of reduction is also observed in industries as well you can see here that uh, any industry whose turnover is up to 50 crore rupees uh, uh, which amounts which accounts for 96 percent of companies in india their tax has been lowered as well and 97 percent of income tax return was was filed electronically so this itself is a good sign last item is regarding a book that is launched by uh, vyanka naiduji and this book is written by uh, senior journalist nitin gokhle and the name of this book is securing india the modi way so keep this in mind many times not in upsc but in other exams like bank and ssc you may be asked this sort of question i have a couple of questions here for you guys take your time to answer it i'll go through them I've, i'll go through all of them i, tr I promise i promise you and uh, don't forget to get your pen drive and tablet courses with this i end this discussion i'll see you all soon enjoy your sunday don't forget to download this lecture from our website or telegram channel don't forget to subscribe share do share this uh, yesterday i observed a uh, day before yesterday i observed a comment and uh, one of our friends said that one of the uh, listeners said that he is sharing it so hats off to you guys thank you very much and uh, do give us a like if you think that you have learned something new today i will wait for your comment and do let me know about this version as well until then enjoy your studies this is prashant Mani signing off i'll see you all soon take care jay hind